Now to return this image inside of Photoshop, I'll first of all duplicate my background layer by pressing on Ctrl J. And to follow along, I'll be leaving the link where you can get this file in the description below. Now after I duplicate my background layer, I'm just going to clean up the image by removing the blemishes on the image. Now there are different ways in which you can use to remove blemishes from your image. You can either pick the spot selling brush tool from here after you duplicate your background layer and just paint over any blemishes you want to remove and it will automatically remove the blemishes for you just like that as you can see so if you like using the spotting brush to remove blemishes from your image you can use it but for me personally i prefer to use the focus separation method to remove blemishes from my image and i'm going to show you how you can do that but before i do that i'll first of all try to use the touch of me heal to remove the blemishes from my image so after i duplicate my layer i'll just come to my filter click on retouch on me and i'm going to click on heal right here now instead of spending time trying to remove the blemishes my image manually the retouch on me will automatically help me remove my blemishes and any blemishes that are still remaining i'm just going to use figure separation to remove it and i'm going to show you right now all right so it has finished loading i'm just making it big so you can see you just try to remove the blemishes for me so see the before and the after the before and the after so i think it did an amazing job so i want to click on apply right here and just going to apply that on me now any blemishes that are still remaining like you can see right here there are some blemishes still remaining i'm just going to remove them with focus separation and to remove that i'm just going to come to my action and if you don't have my action you can download it for free link in the description below of this video i'm going to click on the action and just click on focus separation 16 bits for this image i'm just going to use a focus separation blur radius of 11 and hit ok and for focus separation blur radius if you want your image to be smooth use a low blur radius and if you want to rotate the story image use a high blur radius now once i use level now if i want to put the blemishes i'm going to click on this focus separation copy right here which is this first layer right here and i'm just going to zoom in on my image pick my close thumb tool make sure i'm using a soft one brush hardness is set to zero all right and my opacity is set to 100 and mode is set to normal flow set to 100 sample is set to current layer so I'm going to reduce the brush size by pressing on the square bracket key and just press option if you're using the Mac and alternate if you're using the Windows to sample from the close by area and just paint it over any blemishes I want to remove. All right, so option to sample or alternate to sample and just paint over any blemishes you want to remove from your image. So alternate to sample, paint over any blemishes you want to remove, alternate to sample or option to sample and just paint over any blemishes you want to remove so i want to remove this hair right here sample and just paint over it sample and just paint over it sample and just paint over it just like that sample and just paint over it all right so i'm going to do the same thing for here sample and just paint over it all right now i'll come to the body again i want to press alternate sample and just paint over it 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 just like that so i'm going to be doing this for the whole of the image here. just press option or alternate to sample and just remove the blemishes from your image all right so let's quickly see the before and the after so this is the before and this is the after so please if you are doing this step just make sure you are actually taking your time to remove the blemishes from your image all right, so take your time to do this step. Alternate to sample or option to sample and just paint over any blemishes you want to remove just like that. All right, so I feel it's okay like this for me. So let's go see the before and after. So see the before and the after. All right, the before and the after. Now, next I'm going to do, I'm going to create a stamp symbol here by pressing up. Control Shift Alternate E or Command Option Shift E if I use the Mac. All right. So what I want to do now, I'm just going to use the Retouch on Me Micro Dodge and Bond to actually do my Micro Dodge and Bond for this image. So to do that, I'm going to come to my filter again. Click on Retouch on Me and click on Dodge and Bond right here. Now what this is going to do for me? This will automatically do my Micro Dodge and Bond for me. So I don't have to do Micro Dodge and Bond manually. This will touch on me will automatically do the micro the jump ball for me as well. Let's just allow it load right now. All right, it has finished loading, so let me just expand it. All right, so let's quickly see the before and after the dodge and ball. All right, so take a look at the image. So this is the before and the after. The before and the after. 
Now with the blend right here, you can choose to add more dodge and burn to your image if you want. I want to take it up a little bit and let you see the before and after. So this is the before and the after. Just going to do the micro dodge about for us, the before and the after. Now from here, I'm going to create a soft light layer and just click on apply. Now from here, I'm going to go to my blending mode and just change from normal to soft light right here. Now that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a stamp visible layer again by pressing no control shift alternate E. I just got my filter again and this time i'm going to use the Rebloom application to just try and smoothen out the skin so i'm going to click on Rebloom retouch right here and by the way if you need any of this plugin for the retouch of me and the Rebloom, i'll be leaving a link where you can get it in the description below of this video so it's just going to load now all right it has finished loading so let me just let me see you can see the before and after for the Rebloom. so see the before and the after the before and the after and for the test you can choose to reduce the texture or reduce the dodge and burn it but i feel like this works for me so see the before and the after and i'm just going to click on okay now for me you can see this image is looking good already so that way to do for me i'm just going to do a tiny bit of focus separation for this image so i'll come to my action again click on focus separation system bit now once i click on focus separation i'm going to use a blurry dust of about 14. i remember like i said earlier if you want to rotate the texture of your image, use a high blur radius. While if you want your image to be smooth, use a low blur radius. So for team works for me, since I want to use the mixer brush to smooth out the color, I'm going to hit, I'm going to hit OK right here. I'm just going to load that for me. All right now for me, I'm just going to pick my mixer brush tool. Once I pick my mixer brush tool, I'm just going to hide my high texture layer right here. All right, so make sure this clean brush after your stroke is selected. My white is 30. My load is on 30, means doesn't really matter. My mix is on 19, but it doesn't really matter when my flow is on 20. And sample all layer is selected because I'm working on this empty layer, which is this brush layer. I'm going to close my actions. And from here, I'm just going to press my square bracket key to increase and decrease my brush size according to the part of the image I want to work on. So I'm going to brush on the transition between the highlights and the shadow just like this, just to smooth out that transition. And remember, when you are brushing, don't brush your highlights into your shadow and don't brush your shadows into your highlights. So the reason why I'm doing this, I just want to make the image, the transition of the highlight and shadow look smooth because I feel the image looks good already because of the uh, micro dodge and bulb we did with the Reblum application and also with the retouch for me. I'm going to be working more on the transition between the highlights and the shadow just to blend the color out and just make everything look good. And I'm just showing you what I did to retouch this image. It is exactly what I did to retouch this image, the one I uploaded on Instagram and Facebook. All right, so I'm going to brush on the image just like this. So remember not to brush your highlights into your shadow and also not to brush your shadows into your highlights. All right, so let's go see the before and after of what I've done so far. So see the before and the after. The before and the after. So let this work for me. So I think I've seen some blemishes on the forehead. So I'm going to come to my high focus layer right here. Pick my close stamp tool. Press offshore to sample or alternate to sample. I just put on the blemishes I'm still seeing on the forehead. All right. So I'm going to come to the body. Click on my brush layer again. Pick my brush tool. Add my high texture layer. And from here, I'm just going to brush on the body as well. Just to smooth start. Just to smoothen out the colors on the body. Okay. So please, if you are doing this, make sure you're actually taking your time to do it. You don't have to rush your process. Just take your time to do it and actually master it. All right. And if you make any mistake, you can actually pick the eraser tool, pick the eraser tool and just erase it from any mistake you make. And since you are working on an empty layer, it doesn't really matter. You can actually erase it instead of deleting the whole focus equation and starting all over from scratch. So you can do that. So I'm not going to paste on the body right now. So let's quickly see the before and after of what we've done so far. See the before and the after. The before and the after. It looks good to me like this. So let me just go back with you so you can see where we started from and where we are right now. All right, Control G or Command G. So see where we started from and where we are right now. Where we started from and where we are right now. The next I'm going to do, I'm just going to remove the depth on the background. So I'm going to create a stamp cellular by pressing the Command option shift e or control alternate shift e if i use the windows and i'm just going to zoom in and just pick my patch tool you can also use the move tool so i'm going to sample the depth i want to remove 
and just fix it with the patch tool like so. So the move tool also work, but the patch tool is more faster and it works for me. So I'm going to use the patch tool just like that. All right. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to make the eyes and the teeth white. Now to do that, I'm going to come to my action again and just click on eyes and teeth white knee right here. I'm just going to load the action for me. So I'm going to pick my normal brush tool. Make sure I'm using a soft one brush. My hardness is on zero. Opacity set 100. Flow set to 100. So I'm going to zoom in and just paint on only the white part of the eyes just like this. All right. And do the same thing for this part of the eyes. Just like so. And also come to the teeth and just paint on the teeth as well. Just like this. So let's see the before and after. The before and the after. And from here, I'm just going to click on my properties. Once I click on my properties, I'm just going to feather it a little bit. So I'll feather it just to make the edges more softer. And from here, I'm just going to reduce the opacity because I feel it's looking too much. So let this work for me. So see the before and the after. And one more thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to make the cast light of the eyes more catchy. So I'm going to come to my adjustment layer. All right. So I'm going to click on curves adjustment layer and just take this part up a little bit like so. All right. And for me, I'm going to press or command I to invert or control I to invert and just press on only the catch light of the eyes to reveal that effect. All right. So let's place it before and after. Now, say the before and the after. The before and the after. What I'm going to do, I'm going to remove that hair on the eyes. So I'm going to remove that hair. So to do that, I'm going to add a new empty layer. I'll pick the remove tool. Now with my remove tool selected, make sure sample layer is selected. I'm just going to draw on the hair, which I want to remove like this. And by the way, you can also use this method to remove the stray hair around the image if you want to do that. I'm going to do the same thing for the one inside the eyes. I also do the same thing for here. And once I'm done, I'm going to click on good right here. And it's just going to remove that hair for me. And the result is really, really amazing. All right, so remove that. So let's quickly see the front after. So see the before and the after. And you can do the same thing for the stray hair. So just take your time to remove the stray hair if you want to. Let's quickly see the before and after. So see the before and the after. The before and the after. Now one more thing I'm going to do for this image. I'm just going to make the eyes pop, make the lips pop, and make the nose pop. And to do that, I'm going to create another storm symbol layer by pressing on Command Option Shift E or Control Alternate Shift E if I'm using Windows. And I'm just going to zoom in. Once I zoom in, I'm going to go into my action again and just click on this on sharpen eyes and lip mask right here. I just going to load that action. So I'll pick my normal brush tool again. I'm just going to zoom in. And this time, I'm just going to paint on the eyes. So once I push on the eyes, push on this other part of the eyes, you can see just me the eyes pop. Also, I'll do the same thing for the lips. I'm just going to make the lips pop as well. All right, so see the before and the after. The before and the after. So since I've already colored this image instead of Capture One, and by the way, if you want to watch that video, I'll be leaving the link where you can watch that video right here. The last thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to come to my action and just click on this rich tool right here, just to add more contrast look to the skin. I'm going to click on this rich tool right here. And you can see, it just adds that pop to the image, all right? So, Seen before and the after. The before, the after looking so much better. And for me, if you feel the effect is too much, you can just come to the opacity and just reduce the opacity a little bit. So I feel that works for me. So I'm going to leave my 30. So see the before and the after. The before and the after. And this is how I retouch this image right here. Now, if you want to learn how I balance the raw file, color this image inside of Capture One, check out this video right here. I'll see you guys in my next one. Stay creative.